All right, today I'm gonna to show you some titanium hiking poles. Now at first I was like, this seems a little random for this channel, but then I realized this is an opportunity to beat the crap out of things. You know, what's not to like about that? And also I was really curious about what a titanium rod could do. So these were sent to me from Atlas Titanium, a company founded in British Columbia, which is where I live as well. And um, these are pretty interesting. So they're made of grade 19 titanium, which is a heat treatable titanium with very high strength and good stress and corrosion resistance. I'll post a link to some technical specs down below for those who are interested. And the grip is rubberized cork. It's got a paracord here, which you can tie in a variety of different ways. At the end here, there is a composite tip protector. This just slides off. And here you've got a point. It's got a titanium ferrule here, which prevents the rod from pushing too deep into the ground. And this can also be unscrewed, so it can be thrown in an emergency. And um, this can also be replaced with a snow disc, which is to be released soon. And uh, there's also going to be a new version, the V2, which will have interchangeable tips as well. And uh, so if you remove this, then uh, this would thrust more effectively, of course. But uh, it works pretty well as it is. I'll show you that in a moment. And uh, they're also working on a hand guard for this. So that would be on top here. And there are different lengths. You can see these three right here. Hopefully they all fit in frame. I can't really see it from here, but I think they are in frame. Here are two examples of the many ways in which the cord can be set up. On this case, it's just wrapped around, so it's out of the way, and can be set up like this, so you can slip the hand through, like so. It's more secure. They all come with these nylon cases here, which are very sturdy, and uh, fit them well. There is, um, it's pretty easy to close this up like so. And uh, also various attachment methods here. There's an extra tip protector on there as well. And uh, yeah, these here are very heavy duty. Excellent stitching, definitely well made. So obviously these are designed as very strong hiking poles for use on different terrains but they're also intended to be useful as self-defense tools if the need arises, if you have to defend yourself against wild animals, for example, things like that. And so I wanted to test them out and see first just how strong are these? You know, how much of a beating can they take? And you know how I do this, I don't pull any punches. So I went pretty hard with them. In fact, kind of ridiculously hard. Uh, ramped it up pretty quickly and uh, well, you can, that's the thing. I can strike things with this that I would never whack at with anything else. You know, not even necessarily a mace because a steel mace would uh, get quite a bit more damage from that. These on the other hand are, well, it's titanium. They are solid rods and uh, it is really, really strong and durable stuff. No doubt about it. Conveniently at the beach, I found a random piece of concrete and rebar. So that seemed like a, a good target. Well, a pretty harsh target. This is uh, rather unpleasant, by the way, in case you're wondering, there is a lot of hand shock from this. Of course, I mean, if, if you're striking an iron rod with another rod, it's not going to be a lot of fun, really. So it definitely hurts the hand, but the rod is really pretty much unaffected by that. Yeah, you have um, a bit of scraping and there was some rust on it from the, uh, from the rebar, but uh, no big deal really. I cleaned it up and uh, you can still see signs of the scraping, but uh, very little happened really. I actually expected it to be damaged a little more than this, but uh, it's really primarily cosmetic damage. And I also took off the ferrule to see what difference that makes you know, with and without. I was a little worried that the, the threads would get damaged to the point of not working properly anymore. Um, and there was, there's some minor damage on there. I'll show you that in a moment. 
but uh, the threads still work perfectly fine and uh, whether you strike with or without the ferrule no problem really i mean you can see there in the close-up here there are a few spots where the material like there's some superficial uh, scraping but it's it's almost nothing really it's pretty amazing i mean obviously titanium is tough but this is um that's some pretty good stuff i was definitely impressed by that and uh, also the point even that was striking with the point on several occasions to see if that would get bent or, or chip or broken or anything like that but it's really fine i have to get very close to the camera i don't even know how well you can see that it's absolutely minor you know steel would look far far worse in this case in fact a, a steel rod like this would would be bent and would be quite severely damaged you can't just hit a rock with uh, a piece of steel and expect it to be undamaged this on the other hand no problem really so there are some issues with that now titanium of course is lighter than steel and uh, it's for defensive use that is actually a bit of a disadvantage now you want the lightweight of course for hiking you don't want to lug something heavy around that would just be exhausting over time um, but this is where i see some potential drawbacks so you'd think well it's a solid rod if you strike something or someone hard with this it's going to you know cause a lot of damage but the rods are really quite flexible oh and speaking of flexibility they are still perfectly straight which you can hopefully see um, both of these are still fine have not taken a set so i set up the ballistic gel torso and struck it pretty hard to see what would happen and the answer is nothing really and so as I said, it, it flexes quite a bit, as you can see, in the slow-mo, and uh, there is quite a lot of jiggle in the gel, but uh, there is really, you know, the pipe underneath wasn't broken, and I don't think this would have done a whole lot. I also tried to strike it with the point to see if, if that would open it up, but there was really just a bit of a scratch. Didn't do a whole lot. Now, that would suck, you know, being hit with the point. That would not be pleasant. But through clothing, that probably wouldn't even do anything. So, um, against animals, through a thick hide, that's probably not really going to do terribly much either. Uh, thrusts are a different story. Even with the ferrule on, this penetrates quite a bit. So, that's where it's effective. If you get in between the ribs, then you can actually get somewhere. Let's see how far do we did we get here oh yeah. yeah now the issue with that is for self-defense a thrust it doesn't have a lot of stopping power thrusts are very lethal you know regardless of what what it is if it's a sword or a dagger or a spike anything like that you know they were in history known to be highly lethal and uh, the the only problem with that is it, it doesn't really incapacitate or stop the target quickly this is the kind of thing that relies on pain compliance, which you never should rely on, because not everybody will react to it the way you hope. It might be a lethal wound, but it, it's not, you know, structural damage so much. Especially a wild, aggressive animal might not stop when getting impaled with this. It might just keep charging. Now, the snow disc might actually be somewhat more effective. The only problem is that it limits the penetration a lot. So if there was a way to put a disc further down, a disc or some kind of guard, that would probably work reasonably well. You know, similar to a boar spear or some hunting swords, that kind of concept. That would probably be reasonably effective. So um, Christopher, which we've probably seen in some other videos, one of the local blacksmiths who I do tests with every now and then, actually volunteered to be struck with this because you know we saw that it wasn't it didn't seem to be doing much to the torso and uh you know, he was curious what it would feel like a bear would laugh at you and eat you uh, a person on drugs would laugh at you and kill yes. you yes and eat you, <laughs> and <then they'd> eat <laughs> you. <laughs> depending on the drugs <laughs> you want to do a good whack across my back i'll tell you how much it hurts okay he volunteered this was not my idea <laughs> i'll tell you how much it hurts it's a light one 
Nothing, huh? It's child's play. Who okay. Knows? I can give you a bit more. That one, I felt, but... Uh, Still not much. That's not going to stop me. Okay. That was about 60%. Yeah. I mean, if you're hitting me as hard as you possibly can, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt, but it's not going to. But it's really just going to piss me off. Yeah. Let's see. Light one. Yeah. Medium. No. Okay. Let's, let's go 75 about. It's fine. That hurt. Okay. But not a big deal, huh? Not a big deal. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks for volunteering. <laughs> <laughs> if you hit me that hard with a... With, a, with, with an extremist stick? stick? Yeah, that would be That bad. would be pain. So I was a little reluctant to hit him with this at first, so I, I went pretty light first and then gradually increased the power. I didn't go beyond about 75% or so. In hindsight, I'm thinking it was probably more like 65. So I, I didn't go full apeshit, so to speak. But it didn't hurt him much at all. You know, the, the ones on the back didn't do a whole lot. He, he wasn't even particularly bruised the next day, he said. So moderately hard hit to the leg hurts, but it's not going to be incapacitating. It's not going to stop a determined attacker, let alone certain wild animals. And uh, I mean, sure, striking the head is a different story. <laughs> We're obviously not going to try that because that would be way too dangerous. You know, striking the head, yes, I'm sure that would definitely be effective. It would at the very least cause a concussion. It might potentially cause a fracture. And uh, depending on the area that you're striking, like for example, if the ferrule were to strike hard on the collarbone, maybe it would break it. I don't know. It also depends a little bit on the length. I'm pretty sure that the shortest one would have a better chance of breaking bone simply because it doesn't flex quite as much. It's lighter, but because it is shorter, the flexibility is limited so you don't lose quite as much of the kinetic energy due to the rod bending. So yeah, I would not really recommend relying on these for self-defense, especially against wild animals. That seems a little risky. Now, is it better than nothing? Absolutely, no doubt about that. But uh, it might give you a bit of a false sense of security. The next version might have changes that make it more effective for striking, we'll see. Um, if I, like just as a self-defense tool, I would think this should be thicker because that would make it a little heavier. That would also increase or decrease the flex and uh, it would hit harder. Now, of course, for hiking, again, that would not really be desirable. So there's that. As far as hiking is concerned, I haven't personally tried them for that purpose yet, but uh, it seems like quite a good design. Maybe the ferrule could be a little larger. Um, I'm not sure that this would really prevent it from sinking into soft ground, but uh, yeah, otherwise, Definitely nice and stable. You just got to find the right length for you and it should work quite nicely. And uh, the, the grip is quite comfortable. Definitely have to say that. And these grooves here really help the grip and uh, yeah, nothing wrong with that. The rubberized cork also has some shock absorbing properties. So yeah, certainly good for hiking. And well, obviously the durability is off the charts. You know, good luck trying to break this. Even if you do it deliberately, it's very hard. You know, the word unbreakable or indestructible is often used indiscriminately when it's not really the case. But uh, this, you know, that's as close as you can get. Nothing is truly indestructible. It all just depends on how much you ramp it up and exactly what you do to it. By the way, I'm not going to shoot it, just so you know, or use explosives or anything like that. So I think you would probably need some machines in, in order to get that done. This would be really, really hard to break. Otherwise, by hand, I don't think you could really do it. And uh, that makes them pretty cool. You know, indestructible titanium poles. I would just go ahead and just call them indestructible. For all intents and purposes, they pretty much are. Well, that's all I have to say about these for now. If you're interested in getting one or two, the link will be down below. There's free shipping in Canada. Uh, there's also international shipping. I'm planning to give one of these away on Patreon. So if you're signed up for a monthly pledge to the channel on Patreon, 
you'll see a post there and you can just comment on it. Just let me know what you like about them or why you would be interested in owning one or whatever really, it doesn't really matter. Just reply something. You can just post nothing but want if you like. I'll probably just randomly draw a winner. So I hope you found this video interesting and thanks for watching. Have a good one folks and stay safe. It means I get to get, get to, get the, it means I get to get, get to, why can't I not say this? I get to beat the crap out of something. I get to get the, get, get, get. I get to get the gecko. Seems to have a gecko in my brain right now. It means I get to get, get. really? Really brain? Why is it so, this is not difficult at all. <laughs> Maybe I should have whacked myself with these over the head. How, a tight, tight, tight. <laughs> what is wrong with me today? <laughs> My brain just keeps malfunctioning. I want to show you some t t <laughs> Oh no, I'm at this point. <laughs> when you messed up so many times, it just gets funny and then you, you can't help laughing, which makes it even worse. <laughs> More outtakes, which makes it even funnier. So it's really hard to keep a straight face. Oh, come on, I can do this. Today I want to show you. <laughs> I want to show you some. <laughs> Damn, I've I've conditioned myself to find the word titanium funny now. This is going to be a problem because I'm going to say this word a lot. Titanium. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is funny about this word. Not inherently. Titanium. 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 I think I'm good now. I am not working properly today. More coffee, I guess.